So guess what? It, this is unbelievable. You know what we've been saying at this show for the last two and a half years is that with the Russiagate investigation that we want evidence and that's all we're asking for because what it looks like from the outside is a big propaganda machine <laughs> is trying to distract people from the actual problems of the Democratic Party, our electoral system, and our country. And that's what it seems like, blaming another country for the problems we created ourselves. And we just kept asking for evidence. We just wanted, is there evidence? And there was never evidence. They've, they've indicted a lot of people, but it's for stuff that has nothing to do with the core accusation, which is that the Trump campaign illegally conspired with the Russian government to, uh, to, over, to, to affect our election. That's the core. They can't say treason because you have to be at war with that country for it to be treason. So it's not even treason, even if he did everything they said they did. But anyway, look at this. NBC tweeted this out. New exclusive Senate Intelligence Committee is approaching the end of its investigation in the 2016 election, having uncovered no evidence. I'm not I'm not making that. It says right there. Having uncovered no direct evidence of a conspiracy between Trump campaign and Russia. According to the Democrats and Republicans on the committee. So I retweeted that, and I'm breaking NBC, looking for a new business model. <laughs> hey, Rachel Maddow tonight, Senate Intelligence Committee are in collusion with Putin. <laughs> so I tweeted that out as a joke, and then Rachel actually tweets this out. Senate Intelligence Committee Democrats dispute claims that Russia probe found no collusion. She's hanging on, baby. So She's you were you were close. <laughs> I was close. She's hanging on. She's going to contradict her own reporting, her own company's reporting. She's contradict. She's linking to Mother Jones. And, of course, she just puts it out as a quote because she doesn't want to get in trouble uh, actually contradicting her own company's reporting. So there, she, there's, that's what she tweets out. Isn't that something? And so then Ken Delinian, the NBC reporter, goes under her tweet and says... NBC News stands by its story, which has not been credibly challenged. King appears to be disputing something we didn't assert, that they have reached a final conclusion. Warner did not contradict our reporting. So now everybody, even Dave and Court, so they're tweeting out this article that says, oh, the Democrats didn't agree with this. What are you talking about? And we dispute it. And what Ken Delinian is telling them, they don't dispute what we're saying. They're disputing something we're not saying. They're disputing that we said that the investigation is over. We didn't say that. That's what he's saying. That they have reached a final conclusion. We didn't say they reached a final conclusion. Let's not go what? crazy here. We were just looking for some okay. quick clicks on a headline, all right? <laughs> that, that's what we do here. Rachel's doing the same thing. We're actually right next to each other tweeting this fake dispute. What they have asserted is that this investigate this committee has uncovered no evidence. That's what they're asserting. Not that they've concluded their investigation, but that they've none. But they've and after two years that they've uncovered nothing. That's what they're asserting. And then this story is pretending that they're asserting something else. And he claimed that's not what we're asserting. Isn't this funny to watch them? So Rachel Maddow is doing her hardest to gaslight people who turn to her for information. Even if it contradicts her own reporting at, at her own company. No matter what. So this is Rachel Maddow starting at a conclusion and working backwards, which is what all conspiracy theorists do. That's what she is. She's a, she's a crazy, nut, over-the-top conspiracy theorist that any information, she can put it into a chart and tie it back to Russia, just like Glenn Beck did with Muslims and the caliphate. She's been doing that for two and a half years, and she just can't accept reality, and so she continues to gaslight her own viewers. It's not going to hurt her ratings, her viewers like to be scared. They like to be frightened. They turn to her to be scared every day. They like this conspiracy theory she's spewing. That's not going to hurt her, but it's obvious. And I don't, I don't know how anybody could ever take Rachel Maddow seriously for the rest of their life. But there it is. That's how it says. So there we go. And you want to see... Uh, uh, so they bring on... When this story broke, they brought on this guy, Ken Delinian... Now, the, the thing that's interesting about Ken Delinian is that you've, we've talked about him on this show before. The L.A. Times outed this guy as working with the CIA. 
And Glenn Greenwald likes to point to that all the time, and so do I. And so that's why that's, this, this even holds more water, because it goes against the, the narrative this guy normally tells. Um, so he comes on MSNBC, breaking news, and watch how, watch how he kind of blows her mind. This is a, a three-minute video clip. I want to play the whole thing. So here we go. On the Senate Intelligence Committee, their investigation into Russian election interference and what they have and have not uncovered. NBC's Ken Delanian has just jumped in front of a camera to join me with his new reporting. So, Ken, what are you hearing? What are you learning? Hallie, after two years and interviewing more than 200 witnesses, the Senate Intelligence Committee has not uncovered any direct evidence of a conspiracy between the Trump campaign and Russia. That's according to sources on both the Republican and the Democratic side of the aisle, Hallie. And careful viewers and readers will note that Senator Richard Burr, the chairman of the Intelligence Committee who leads this probe, essentially said that in an interview with another network last week. But what I've been doing since then is checking with my sources on the Democratic side to understand the full context of his remarks, because that was essentially a partisan comment from from one side. But this is a bipartisan investigation. And what I found is that the Democrats don't dispute that characterization. Hmm. The disagreement comes, though, over that pattern of context that we've all seen and heard about over the last few years, more than 100 contacts between Trump campaign officials and Russians. The Democrats say that those are those remain highly suspicious and that there's a pattern here that still raises questions. This is first of all, I'll stop at once. But this is kind of amazing. They had over 100 communications with Russia over the. How many communications they have with Israel? How many communications they have with Turkey? How many communications they have with Saudi Arabia? They don't put any of this into context. And this is the kind of reporting that they that nor, that Rachel Maddow does and and that everybody's been doing on this. They don't put any of this into context. They don't even tell you what the the indictments. They're not about the core case. They have really nothing to do with it. Stuff like that. So this kind of thing. They have 100 contacts. Is that a lot? Is that normal? Is that more than people should have? Who are they contacting? Was it was it business people they were contacting? Was it was it uh, uh, other people he owed money to? Was it the Kremlin? So they don't tell you any of this stuff. So this is the kind of shoddy reporting they've been doing. But here he is, a guy who's uh, you know it, the NBC News has been pushing a false narrative for two and a half years, and he's debunking it. So here we go. Here's the rest of it. The Republicans say that we just don't know in the end what those were. And, and Richard Burr said publicly, look, um, the motives for those are unclear. And we may end up with a report that says you decide, American public, whether there was collusion. Another important fact here, Hallie, is that they are nearing the end of this investigation, we are told. But that once they interview their final witness, it will take another six to seven months to prepare a report. So the American public may not see the fruits of this for some time, Hallie. So, so we probably won't see the re the fruits of this report. So they have to inter they have to interview who, according to him, just now said one more witness, and then it's going to be six months or seven until we see the final report. So it might not it might not be till twenty twenty before we see this report. I mean, come on, maybe. But you know what I know deep down, the collusion is in all of us. It's all of us. I think that's what they're trying to tell yeah. us. <laughs> Search deep down. <laughs> So now watch how she, watch how she's she doesn't like this news and watch what happens. Just got to I have a couple of questions for you, Ken. You just answered one of them, which was a timeline on when we all the American public might actually get a sense to see this. And it sounds like it not might not be until, until much closer to the end of the year. That's right, because, um, you know, they are nearing the end of their fact gathering process. Richard Burr said that publicly. My sources are confirming there aren't that many witnesses left to interview for Senate investigators. But after they conclude that, then they're going to sit down and write their report. And by the way, the Democrats say this report will not be good for Donald Trump. It will question the judgment of many people in the Trump orbit for having these meetings for essentially allowing themselves to be preyed upon by a Russian intelligence operation that sought to interfere in the election and to help Donald Trump. But again, no direct proof of a right. conspiracy. As so, one as one Democratic aide said to me, we never. I, I like how he goes. Again, they're going to say a lot of bullshit, but they're without any evidence of anything. But they're going to keep saying all this stuff anyway. That's pretty much what he just said, right? We'll have more nothing at eleven. Yeah, we're going to have more nothing. There is no evidence, but they're going to keep saying this and how bad Donald Trump is. All that stupid stuff he did. That's what he. Pretty much, I'm paraphrasing, but that's pretty much what he's saying. As one, as one Democratic aide said to me, we never thought we were going to find a contract between Trump and Vlad saying, hey, let's collude. But the question is, how do we interpret all that? Ah, we never thought we'd find it. Really? You never thought you'd find evidence? 
So now, they're, so now they're like, hey, we never thought we'd actually, you know, find evidence. That's what they're saying. We never thought we'd actually find evidence or convict him. Why, but why? Let's watch the rest of this. I, I know I stopped it way too many times already. These various contacts between Trump campaign and Russia. Not to put too fine a point on it, but I want to make sure I'm understanding this because you are sharing this with me and with all of us at the same time here. And then I'll get Nancy and Shauna to, to react to this. But if and when the president, as he may inevitably do, point to this reporting, point to these conclusions and say, look, the Senate Intelligence Committee found that I am not guilty of conspiracy. He, he would be correct in saying that. Well, except except the, the use of the term not guilty is not really appropriate because they're right. not a court of law. And Robert Mueller still has yet to weigh in. Right. And that's a big question, because Robert Mueller knows things that the Senate investigators do not have access to. That said, Trump will cl claim vindication through this and he will be partially right because Senate investigators have access to highly classified intelligence. So, for example, if there was an intercept between some Russian intelligence officers suggesting that they were conspiring with the Trump campaign, they would see that. That has not emerged. So that evidence, it does not exist. And Trump will. Here's another example of evidence that would be great, but it doesn't exist. Here's, here's <laughs> right? a, if they have like an intercept where they caught him, that would be fantastic. Do you have that? No, we don't have that. You know what else would be great? If we had like an email that showed that. Do you have that? No, we don't have any of that. But boy, if we did, huh? And you can't not say not when there's something that may or not may, be may not or not. So. Ah, <laughs> watch it gets even better. I know it sounds funny, but it's going to get better. Here we go. <laughs> Vindication. But Trump has set the bar so high. Essentially, if he's not convicted in a court of law of conspiring in his mind, he's innocent. No, no that's how it works in world, too. If you don't get convicted of a crime in the court of law, you're innocent. That's pretty much how it works in his mind. He'll think he's innocent, but we all know he's guilty. <laughs> In his mind, just because we don't have any evidence, we couldn't convict him in a court of law. He thinks he's not guilty. What a, what a maniac that Donald Trump is. <laughs> I can't even write a joke for that already. It's, it's already a joke. <laughs> like, that's a, in his mind, he thinks he's innocent. Why? Because he wasn't convicted and there's no evidence. What a jackass. <laughs> 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 Doesn't he know how things work? You're guilty if Rachel Maddow says you are and enough people don't like you. Ugh, you're canceled. <laughs> <laughs> But Trump has set the bar so high, essentially, if he's not convicted in a court of law of conspiring, in his mind, he's innocent. That's not how many senators of both parties see it, Howie. That's, senators don't understand how criminal justice system works. <laughs> Uh, we, we're we're going to have a counseling session uh, led by Goldman Sachs to teach them how it works. At the end of this, the same senators that liked him before still like him, and the ones that didn't still don't. <laughs> so there's that. So there's that. Okay, thanks for that report. So there you go. Uh, I guess they're going to drag this out until Christmas. Sounds like they're going to drag it out until oh, Christmas. That's a conservative estimate. Yeah. I, I wish I shared your optimism on that one. God damn it. <laughs> And Mueller's getting paid this whole time. And ju just so you know, Mueller's a liar. <laughs> Mueller's a... These are, there's no good guys in this scenario, right? Trump's a horrible. Mueller's horrible. The CIA people are horrible. Uh, NBC News is horrible. Rachel Maddow is out of her mind, needs a, a straitjacket. Turns out Trump thinks he's president. Turns out Trump thinks he's not guilty because he's being acquitted in a court of law. So there you go. Uh, this would be vindication uh, for people who, but I, there's nothing to be vindicated for. I didn't take a side in this. What I'm saying is that there's no evidence. And as people would say, Jimmy, what are you going to do when Mueller comes out with evidence? Of, and I, you know what I always say, right? I'm going to report it then. When evidence emerges that there was criminal conspiracy between the Trump campaign and Russia, I'll report that. But until there is, I'm not going to do what Rachel Maddow does and just sit there with a chalkboard like crazy Glenn Beck and draw conspiracy theories all day and night. For two and a half years, she's been an out of her mind conspiracy theorist. She said Russia is going to freeze you when it gets cold. Um, but she's the number one show. And now do you understand when they smear me why I don't give a fuck? I don't want to be in their club when CNN writes a hit piece on me or Washington Post includes me in a piece of shit article. 
because they're that that's how fragile the establishment news is they're afraid of a youtuber that they have to smear us and these people are the biggest conspiracy liars in the world propagandists for every war won't even cover pro- pro- progressive politicians or they'll be fired can't even tell the truth about a world they'll be fired that's who these people are let them smear me i this that's the greatest badge of honor i could ever have anyway there you go uh this will not put an end to this rachel maddow will still keep doing shows like this all the way up until 2020's election i guarantee you she'll keep doing she's not gonna stop what do you guys think she's not gonna stop of course not okay the gravy trains are rolling. Gravy, she's number one, baby. No matter no matter which headline they have, if if they have a headline one way or another, right. the gravy train still roll. So Comcast is happy with all of those players That's at correct. the end of the day. And, and who it. loses out? All of us. That's right. Okay. That's a great country. And now you know why people get their news from YouTube. We're announcing our live dates for 2019. We're going to Chicago and Portland, Seattle, New York, all over the country. Go to jimmydorecomedy.com for a link for all our tickets to all our shows. It'll be right underneath there, too. Please become a patron if you like our content and help support the show. You can become a patron for $5 a month, and we give you hours of bonus material. And make sure you're subscribed. They unsubscribe people every day. I'm not kidding. Make sure you're subscribed and click that bell so they give you a notice when we drop a video. It's the only thing we can do to fight back against the bastards. Thanks for your support.